and then we are chasing them down. Just a mighty cavalry force. And man, they are javelining the crap out of these fleeing uh, Britannians. Ready, boys? Do your damage. Do what you gotta do. Handle your biz. Oh, yeah. Oh. Glorious. Bloody. Concussive force. Kill this one right here. Yeah, that's right. Unite the clans here, geeks. Back in your life. Another episode. Mm, not of a vlog. I'm gonna take my face from taking up your whole screen. I'm gonna stick it down in the corner right now and you will realize that yes, this is a face cam. This is our Total War Attila campaign where we play the picks. We have set ourselves the goal of uniting Britannia under a Celtic High King. None of this division. No Obdanians, no Caledonians, and definitely no Romans on this island. The previous episodes of this series, Total War, are the only videos on my channel, the only gaming videos without a face cam, and there is a reason for that. I did not want you guys to see the faces I make when I'm in the middle of a battle and trying to concentrate. You know if you've been watching this series, there can be two, three, four, five, ten second gaps between me talking in the middle of a battle, and that is because it is intense, intense concentration. The face that I make when I'm concentrating looks a little bit like this. Yeah, I stick my tongue out a little bit, I bite it, and I furrow my brow. I don't want you guys to see that. But I'm taking the risk of adding a face cam to this episode because I wanted to connect with you guys. I have been thinking about bringing this series to a close. And that breaks my heart. In fact, I couldn't even conceive of the idea of ending this without making it to the goal that I set for myself until I had conceived of a really grand uh, epic finale for this series. So we have set our sights on Lindum, uh, currently held by the Jutes, who I tell you do not belong in Britannia. And we are going to raise, and we are going to raise three armies, father and sons. King Andy leading a mighty army on each flank, one of his boys, Cam, Sedge, each leading an army of their own, and we march south on those jute bastards, and we take what is theirs and bring an end to this series. Now, I would love to unite all of Britannia. Once we've taken Lindum, there are three cities that still exist, the three in the south. And the problem is that this really isn't the most popular series on my channel, and I am wondering if another series would be better suited here. If another series would appear, appeal, if another series would appeal to more of my subscribers, that, that is the question. If I don't have any Total War content on my channel, I'm not gonna be happy. I adore this game, I love this series, and I really like this DLC, I like playing as the Celts. Uh, it's what I wanted from the outset with this game. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I feel connected to the Total War community. I, I think most weeks I will go back and forth at some point on Twitter with the guys who work at CA, either Will Overgaard or Craig Glaycock. And uh, earlier this week, I had a back and forth on Twitter with the biggest Total War YouTuber, Lionheart himself. If you guys don't know him, like I said, he's the biggest Total War YouTuber, so you probably shouldn't be watching my videos before you watched any of his. Our exchange on Twitter actually started out with me criticizing him. I kind of thought he was being a bit arrogant. Uh, and I'm impressed that he replied to me. A lot of people who have the following he has would either mute or block somebody who is just starting out like me. But he engaged, we went back and forth, and we actually came uh, to agree on uh, what we were talking about. And, um, and L Lionheart, who is, like I said, the biggest Total War YouTuber, now follows me on Twitter. And he actually teased that he may come check this series out. That is all it needs to keep going, guys. Uh, if you tell a couple of your friends, if you haven't hit the like button in this series yet, and you do it now, it won't take much to convince me to keep this thing going. Uh, or if it's been gone for a little while, it won't take much love for this video for me to bring it back and continue our campaign into the South. So if this is the last episode and the biggest Total War YouTuber in the world happens to be watching it, then 
Lionheart, this one is for you. If this is going to be our last episode, guys, let's make it an epic one. I may cut more than usual out of this episode, guys, but I am going to skip through the boring stuff. I'm going to keep you up to date as I build the trio of armies, the triumvirate that will march south on those jute bastards. Let's do this thing. All right, guys, here we are back to the campaign map. I uh, wanted to refresh your minds as to what happened last time. It's throwing me off a little bit, having the face cam. I haven't had to think about that uh, so far uh, in this series, but we will manage. So last time, uh, when last episode started, we were right here, just on the outskirts of Ablana. We had defeated the Ibdanians in the open open field, but we had yet to take the city. So in the battle last time, we took the city and I mentioned to you guys my new plan, which is to create three armies here in the north and march south on Lindum. Lindum is the last city in the north, Britannia Inferior and Hibernia, Caledonia and Hibernia. Uh, there are these three in the south. We had originally planned to go for them unless the series, you know, starts picking up and gets a lot more views. I think we're going to have to put that off uh, for the foreseeable future. But our goal now is an epic victory, and it's in this city right here. I have no idea what's going on. So one of the first things we're going to do is uh, see if we can hire ourselves a spy. So recruiting a spy is quite simple. It should be under here. But I don't know if we have actually built the infrastructure that would allow us to have a spy in any of our cities. No, I don't think we have. Unless it has happened in Iladon, and I did it accidentally. Mm. Last chance here. Two aces. Come on. No. Alright. So what I'm thinking, uh, guys, is I'm going to plow through a couple of turns. I'm thinking of our family tree uh, if I don't have a spy, I still want to scout, so I'm going to send one of our generals to the south. So of our family tree, you know, none of these people are going. Of these guys over here, the one I care the least about is actually Casicos. He doesn't really have any responsibility right now. He kind of sucks. He can't be a governor, and at the moment, we don't have a plan to make him a general. So I may raise an army for him, march him south. I'll let you know uh, when I make any big moves. So... We have, guys, made some changes. As you know, the idea is to get to get uh, the boys, Cam and Sedge, into a position where they can take command of an army. Right now, Sedgevax still holding uh, his office in Britannia Inferior. Uh, I think what we're going to do is, uh, is remove him from that spot. Uh, it's going to take a turn before we can uh, put either him or Cam into command of an army so we're just going to wrap this thing up and uh, i will see you guys in just a second all right that wraps up this turn will we see something from the jutes will we see something from the romans it's been a long time uh, since the romans were even a uh, a concern for us yeah we're at war with the western roman empire but you know i don't think they want anything to do with us i think they got bigger problems which, is that an insult to us? Mission issued religious request. The old, go the old gods grow restless as the people of these lands do not follow our faith. Let us teach them the ways of our people. Spread your religion to the majority of this province. Eboricum. Turns remaining 14. Reward great Celtic pagan reach. How's Eboricum doing? I know the Romans held it for a long time, so there's probably a lot of Latin Christians. Uh, oh, come on. We almost there, dog. Why is it going down, though? Huh. I mean, ideally, we'd hire a, a priest. Uh, well, nothing we can do about it right now. Unit recruited Celtic archers. Uh, we now have the ability to raise those up in Aldon. Um, with our armies on the move, we got King Andy here looking to cross the bay and come to Aboricum, and each of the boys will be taking over armies in nearby cities uh, in the next, you know, few minutes. Uh, so it's important for me to think 
who's going to go where, what sort of forces can be raised in each city. So the time has come, guys, for us to put the boys in a position of power, I think. Uh, <clears throat> so what we're going to do is um, replace Dummy here uh, with one of the lads. Uh, we have got two of our sons sitting here ready to go. Uh, and looking for a fight and it's free for us to throw them into a position of power so let's throw sedge uh, for this army here and uh, how about this one over here let's uh let's boot acutios as much as i love the man he's done a lot for the picks so far and let's get cam into a position of command so cam uh we've currently got him set up with sort of the things that would be beneficial to a governor. So we are going to set him up with uh, the things befitting a general, a heroic German warrior to accompany him into battle. More experience for his missile recruits, maybe we'll make that a focus of his army, and map holder. Mm, I don't think so. Uh, let's get him that, because he will definitely be reinforcing. Now we'll look at his bro, the Brohemian. Uh, Sedgevax uh, character details so you can definitely add campaign spotting chance we'll take it growth mm. no you know what we're gonna give you uh, additional armor and we're gonna replace public order <clears throat> and you know what there's not much we can do so you might as well be reinforcing public order uh, where you're sitting So the boys have come into power. It'll be a turn before uh, Akuchios and the Olamri, who have been replaced, can slide into these governor's uh, positions. So we will wait for that. But a very important thing is moving King Andy to Aboracum. This is the Olamri. Oh, actually, the Olamri is still in command. Uh, you know what? Let's replace him with Casicos and we'll take this army and we will march south. So, the Olamri gets the boot and in his place we will bring in Casicos. It is possible that this army will get obliterated, that there is a massive Judish force waiting just out of sight where we cannot see them and I need a scout. So, Casicos, welcome back. Casicos is in position, I think he's gained long hair, did he freaking have that before? I don't know. We're also going to see if we can set him up with anything useful. Upkeep cost? Sure. And research rate? I'll take it. So, Casicos, why don't you head over, do a little trade with King Andy, give him whatever troops you can afford. Oh, Andy's got a 20 stack. All right. So what does that mean for us? So King Andy actually doesn't have room to take those troops in. So we will um, merge his horse and merge our two smallest units of woodrunners, which I believe are these two. All right, there we go. I hate doing that, but he might as well gear up. Uh, if Casicos is walking into a trap, he might as well not sacrifice our troops. So we'll send those two up to Andy, and then with whatever movement he has got left, Casicos. Yeah, let's put you in double time. Force march, baby. And let's take you south towards Lindum. We will see what these jute bastards have got in store for us. I see nothing right now. They may have left this undefended. What do we got for a... A tiny, tiny garrison. Guys, this may not be the glorious finale I am looking for. Uh, I don't know what to do. Andy's got a f pretty full stack right here. Uh, although he doesn't have the movement room to get there. So we're at least to turn away from sacking Lindum. So while Andy slides into Aboracum in Ildon, young Sedge has got an army of his own. We can afford to raise some new troops. Things are getting good for us here. So we're actually going to uh, set uh, Sedge here up with some cavalry so we can get into the fight real quick. Uh, so we're going to raise all three. That's going to burn through a decent chunk of our funds, but so be it. Uh, and uh, over here, where Cam is hanging out, the future High King, uh, 
<clears throat> we've been thinking about raising an army uh, with some ranged troops. So for him, let's get in here. We'll give him another wood runner. That'll be three melee units. All right, well, we'll hit him up with a couple of the cheaper archers. All right, so that's it for this turn. I'm sure there is something I have missed, but let's hit it. No, I do not want to assign a provincial governor. I don't think I can yet. No, we'll do that next turn. Ooh, I forgot to mention, guys, but uh, I wanted to feel like a real Dark Ages warrior. So when I look for a beverage to enjoy with this Let's Play episode, I went for mead. A true warrior's drink. I don't know if there's anything more manly than mead. Yeah, it's pink. You're telling me that the warriors of the Dark Ages didn't drink pink mead? You may be right. But this is a delicious cranberry mead from Ontario in Canada where I am from and I'm going to enjoy it on this lovely summery spring day. Uh, a little bit more Total War Attila. So, things are happening in Isle Dawn here. We raised a bit of a cavalry force for young Sedge and we're a turn away from raising some skirmishers and another uh, melee infantry unit for uh, Cam. Now we have marched south with uh, Kasikos here. Uh, I'm going to take him out of that forced march. This is not good uh, for the unit and we'll see what's hiding just below this border. Guys, this may be a cakewalk. Uh-oh. Okay, where'd you come from? Britannic rebels. Oh, is that my fault? Is that because I haven't got Andy to Oborokum yet and I made the other army leave? Alright, can Andy mess them up? How big is their force? Mm. Can Andy can definitely mess them up, but the question is, can anybody else? Yeah. Uh, okay. So let's march you south. We'll see if we can recruit some troops when we get down here. But young Sedge, you, my friend, are going to be fighting these Britannic rebels. So let's get you into position over here. Andy, slide you into the city. You need to start replenishing. Look at your personal unit. All right. Now, over here, we got a few units that will be recruited this turn. Uh, and then uh, Kaum will join us as we march south. But the way it stands now, I think we're going to... Hmm. Do we need more? That's the question. So, we're going to come up with uh, Kasikos and we'll see if he can help out. If he dies, he dies. I've never been a fan of this douche anyway. So, huh. all right, let's uh, do this thing. Oh, you run. You are such a wuss. All right, uh, so Cam, you have a movement left to fortify? No, of course not. Uh, you're gonna move back to the edge of the city. So we're going to set the Golden Torques, which is a terrible army name, uh, up with a few more units from uh, Dad's force here, because uh, Andy's going to be able to recruit very shortly. So we'll give those to Sedge, just in case he gets in trouble, and I want to move Kasikos back so that, yeah, I mean, I don't want him to die. I mean, if he died, I wouldn't have a problem with it, but I wanted to move him within, yeah, reinforcement distance. So that is the game plan here. Yeah, of course, we can reinforce. So we should be pretty safe. Uh, Guys, I think Andy is going to be able to recruit right before we call an end to this. Yeah, yeah, he can. All right, so uh, we're setting him up with some more infantry and two cavalry units. All right, we actually have a decent income still next turn. I don't know what that'll look like when I actually hit end turn and we get to see next time, but uh, let's do this. Uh, I was talking about Twitter at the beginning of this episode. And like I said, I do actually tend to go back and forth a lot with uh, some of the people you might know if you're a big Total War fan. So if you haven't subscribed, uh, I'll throw a little link down there. I'm at Unite the Clans. We have a cinematic. So back and watch. They made ready for war. Yeah, we did. The world had fallen into shadow. Yeah. The earth Pretty happy. Cold. And the wind whispered of death. It's nothing new for us up north. And I beheld a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of scales in his hand. Hmm. This is it. Was born. 
the namesake of this game. Before him. For they knew he would devour the earth and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. Attila was born from darkness and despair. Intense, like I said, the namesake of this game. The golden torques have lost six men. I doubt it looked like that. Cold makes corpses. Set camp, find a settlement, or march to warmer climes to prevent attrition taking place. None of your business. The birth, Attila. The royal hunting line, destined for greatness. Chapter one, preparation. We have finished the prologue. They made ready for war. We completed many of our bonus objectives. Time marches on, we have achieved much, but our people face ever increasing odds. Actually, it seems easier than ever. If we're gonna take out these dudes, it doesn't seem like it's gonna be all that hard. So, Caledonia and Hibernia. Why is it snowing? It's spring. Public order, minus, okay, so bad things are gonna happen. Chapter 2, Desolation, it begins. Attila was born from darkness and despair. Survive. We get some cash money. Hell yeah. But, <clears throat> we're not going to be making much money next turn. So let's spend a little bit of it on upgrades. Iboricum, we shall upgrade to a small city. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I don't know if these other ones desperately need any upgrades. Oh, but we could use some repairs. All right, give you some of that. Uh, so we still got two grand in the bank. It looks though as though we will be losing some money coming next turn. So with the armies we've got, we need to make our move. A small army, yes, for the Heralds of Death, Akutios' former force, but we're gonna move them across the sea. Here is Kasikos, he was our scout. I'll send him further south. If Lindum is gonna be such an easy battle, Hey, where did those rebels go? There they are. Your next command? I want to be ready to move south, just in case Lindum is the cakewalk I think it might be. So we've got two forces here. Yeah. Alright. Sedge. Move south. You are the backup. Kim, hopefully you get here eventually, my brother. And King Andy. Yeah, actually, why the hell is it snowing? Climate change. Oh, might have to fortify. But what if he runs again? Screw it. We'll take losses. I'm too worried about it. Where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? King Andy, why don't you run south? Oh god, that's a long run. Am I going to use all his movement? The Alamans have declared war on Rome. Rome is in fricked up trouble. Trait gained blind. Whew, if this is King Andy, I am good. He's an old freaking man. How old? Uh, 62. And we have not been spending any personal influence. It's okay, we gotta get that dominion up. And we'll spend a little bit soon. Alright. And I have actually not been looking. We have any fear of rebellion? I should be paying a little more attention to this. I'm just gonna secure some loyalty on Sedge. It's down to a five, and he's got uh, some to spend. So let's do that. Forget who is blind. Oh, that is bad. So the plan was for Andy to lead the Grand Army. I'm wondering if that not might not be the best idea. Uh, I want to finish that objective I just laid out for us. I want that triumvirate of armies marching south. But I'm wondering if it might make sense for him to be one of the smaller backup armies. Just there symbolically. Because uh, that is a ugly trait. Let's have him back up. The Golden Torx. Has this army grown? No. Alright, we got it. Ready? Bring Casico's close. Alright, let's do this. Sedge, you must lead this now. Control a large army. Yeah, I think that's probably a wise idea. Man, look how close that fight would be if it was one-on-one. -on -one. 
Oh man, our troops suck compared to theirs. Oh, that's a jute. Oh, they're gonna help us? Hmm. Wonder if I'll just launch a few uh, onager shots in that general direction. Okay, uh, let's just fight this thing. Ooh, another sip of my cranberry mead. Tasty. Alright, dry weather. Let's do this thing. Guys, here we are. Looks like a cool forest battle. I really like this map. I've seen it a couple times. We're gonna try and get the high ground. Is that where? Yeah, that's where our reinforcements are coming from anyway. Uh, I'm gonna set us... I'm gonna set us up, and I'll get back with you guys in just a minute all right guys this is the force we are all set up we got our spears up front in spear wall sitting we have sedgevax sitting here right behind with uh, the celtic warlords we've got all three units of archers in the back and i've got my cavalry i've got the three stronger units here on the left flank and one small unit on the right flank right up against the border of the map and I think we're ready to start this thing. This music is about to get more epic. Ready? So let's move this one up. I didn't realize exactly where our allies would be coming in. Yeah, they have. So I don't think we need our horse for our flank. Four and five. Let's uh, move them down here. Yeah, it does. I wouldn't be surprised if they just fricked up quit right now. Uh, let's march to the edge of here. Alright, so we got all our infantry incoming. Come on. Oh. So. I'm gonna collect all of our. Uh, I'm gonna collect all of our melee infantry. We're gonna make a front row here. Uh, two generals. Two generals. We will throw in behind archers of all kinds. Yep. Yeah, let's uh, make all you guys group three. We'll throw you back here, and we'll throw you in flaming shot. Right? Uh, we have more uh, of that type of infantry. We got you guys. We'll call you group six. These javelin ears. Is that a word? Put you up here. Add you. Add all you guys to group one, uh, and put one of you on each flank. We'll call you group seven. Put one over here. Call you guys group eight. And we'll put you on the right flank. And I uh, might as well move these onagers up. I don't know if they're going to actually be able to do anything. But we'll put them on that kind of a shot. So we are slowly getting into position. They don't have a big force. I know I've mentioned that. Oh, nice. Cavalry general. I'm wondering if we could, uh, you know, kind of kite him lead them away from the rest, but this forest means they could have troops hiding anywhere. So group one, let's do that. Group two, we'll put you on the right side here. Group three, y'all go back here. Uh, yeah, I feel good about this. Four, I'll add you to group five. Uh, and then you guys, Get one on each flank here. Yeah, I feel good. We uh, seem to be getting them in a tough position. Yeah, they are. That's all their units. I'm pretty sure they only have four. Yeah, that's nothing. I'm not interested in that. Oh, we're setting that forest on fire. Why don't you just do that, boys? Uh, let's get... In shield wall, and uh, you two guys will go in spear wall. Do that. 
do a little bit of that. And we'll do a little bit of that. You can move right up. Uh, let's take group six. I may have, yeah, let's get them as far up as we can, fast advance. And with the horse, we are gonna come and hit you as hard as we can from behind. Make them run. Make them run. Make them run. And let's zoom right in here, guys. Last episode, I did not do a good enough job showing you this chaos. Up close and personal. We have set this forest alight. Oh, we are getting blasted. Where from? Look at that. Are those our own shots? What is this? Blood. That is her hideous. Get in there. Yeah, he has. Let's get our generals into this battle. And all our horse. Yeah, that's fine. Let's get all these guys to stop firing. No uh, unnecessary casualties. Oh, yeah. Man, that blood has come a long way. I'm not using any special mods. I feel like that's better than it was even at, at release. And then we are chasing them down. Just a mighty cavalry force. And man, they are javelining the crap out of these fleeing uh, Britannians. Uh, essentially Romans, uh, as far as troops go. Let's get a charge in there, guys. I'm gonna spin us around. Uh, I'm gonna take group five, and I'm gonna ask them to melee attack right here. Yeah, this is going to be ugly. Ready? Ready, boys? Do your damage. Do what you gotta do. Handle your biz! Oh, yeah. Oh! Glorious, bloody, concussive force. Kill this one right here. Yeah, that's right. Who's left? These clowns? That guy looks so confused. <laughs> yeah, you're left, man. Poke him. That'll do. Alright, I think that will probably end this battle. They don't have much left on the go. So let's call it quits here, guys. And uh, you'll probably get another battle coming up right now. There can be no doubt. This is a great victory. The enemy are dead or running from their lives. From their lives? I don't think so. Gaius what? That takes care of that. We will take on the warriors. They were good fighters. Uh, we're looking at running out of money very shortly, guys. I'm going to disband Cascos' force. I think we know what awaits us. And all we must do, if I have the ability, I will throw these guys into Fortify. I don't. And I don't. But our man up here. Throw him into Force March. And we will come as far south as we can come. Next turn, I think, will be the glorious Battle of Lindum and the epic finale to this campaign. And let's begin the siege here, guys. We are declaring war on the Jutes. Yeah, fine by me. Got half. You douche. I hate rival empires too. Too bad you don't have one. Your mother's screams on the morning air. Godhalf. Godhalf, you have no idea what is coming for you. You better hope you got an army hiding just around the corner here. Otherwise, you will be wiped off this island. You will no longer have a foothold in Britannia. Not only will your foothold be gone, but your dignity will be gone. When I kick the Jews out of Lindum, that will be a mark on your honor. And mine will grow ever greater. Gudhalf, I'm gonna own ya. Alright guys, let's keep this fricked up thing going. Alright, we will begin the siege. It's not even a siege, because they ain't got walls. Let's encircle it. We'll give them time to get some reinforcements. Now, this turn ends. Yeah, that's what I thought. Huh. <sighs> 
Huh. This is no ordinary rebellion. Separatists within this province have mobilized to utterly overthrow your rule. Hmm. So, loyalty secured. Sedgevac's more loyal. Helps Andy. Military investment. Yeah, we've encircled it. We've besieged it. Ready for duty, Casicos? Mm, not interested. And a couple of edicts. One and two. Now, I think in my, uh, I think in my eagerness to uh, march south here and, uh, and complete our conquest of uh, Caledonia, Hibernia, and Britannia Inferior, I think I may have been a bit hasty because we just defeated some rebels and now we've got this. <laughs> Roving hunters. I don't even know what this means. These are Pictish separatists. These don't look like our troops. Oh, are there great troops? Maybe that's it. Uh, so I would love to complete the Battle of Lindum and finish our campaign before those guys can do any damage to me. So, so we are going to switch Cam to normal movement and we're going to bring him south here. I think we probably have an overkill force, but this is the grand finale that we have been waiting for. So, we got three armies. We've got young Sedge sitting here with a f mobile force. He's got some decent skirmishers. He is within range. We've got his older brother, Cam, with a small force, a ranged force. This man is the future of the Picts. And that future seems ever clearer now that King Andy has gone blind. Uh, his stats have become terrible. He's a one across the board, but I set us a goal. And that was to march south with father and two sons and conquer Lindum and kick the Jutes the hell out of Britannia. So that's what they're going to do. You may have a massive force. You may be blind and slowly losing your mind, but you will lead this assault, Andy. The battle for Lindum begins now. Um, not exactly going to be a fair fight. Not exactly going to be the grand finale I was hoping for. If this battle is as incredibly disappointing as it seems like it's about to be, I may have to continue this campaign, despite the fact that I teased ending it pretty much the entire episode. Let's get this going. It is pouring rain. We are going to wait. It is still raining. We are going to wait. It is still raining. We are going to wait. Foggy. Uh, not much better, but we'll take what we can get. Uh... I'm going to take my usual minute and get us all set up, guys. I will see all y'all in just a minute. All right, guys. I think I've got us all set up. I don't know if it matters too much how we deploy here because the odds are very in our favor. But both our units of, of reinforcements are coming here from the north. So I set us up on this side uh, because I think we can get in quite easily. Uh, what I've done is... Uh, Set up our set up our wood runners in the front row here. Shields up, ready to go. We've also got King Andy sitting back here. Now, group three behind a wall, or group two, these spears. Uh, we've also lined up archers in the back, set with flame shot, as well as javelin men right here lined up right be behind our front line in case they do come fight us uh, cavalry on each flank seven and six <laughs> and then group eight uh the uh onagers i'm ready to start this thing are you i hope to god this is the glorious final victory we really need but I have a feeling it's going to be way too much of a cakewalk. You know what? You know what? They're bringing their general out. King Andy might choose to go down 
in a ball of epic flames. Group one, march up. You got to defend those uh, those onagers. But King Andy, I want you at the very front of the battle. Yes, we're gonna be smart and move our cav up as well. But uh, I think there's an opportunity for glory here. I want you guys to roll in. You can be group nine. And uh, Cam, group 10. And Cam, you can also join us here. King Andy, what you doing? I know you're old, but seriously, get out there. What are these guys doing? I don't get there. So Andy is charging in. This is it, guys. King Andy at the forefront of the battle. I'll see if I can spot his owl wing helmet. He must be close. I see this sort of shaman guy. Oh no, wait, these are them. These are them. Where's King Andy? I don't know. Where'd you go? They flee. Hopefully there is more to this battle than this, geeks, because this is not the great finale I was hoping for. I think I've cursed myself. I promised you guys we were going to have a grand epic finale. Father and two sons on the same battlefield, chasing down these jute bastards and kicking them the hell out of Britannia, and I thought that would make a great finale for this battle, but it seems to me that the battle may already be over. Uh, we're going to get ourselves into position. We're going to take, in fact, all our troops. And we are going to see if we can... We're going to take all our troops. We're going to finish off uh, this unit of Nordic levies, in fact. Uh, we're going to call an end to the fire. You know what? Sadly, guys, that has done it. I thought this would be an epic finish. I was hoping the Jutes had 320 stacks sitting here in Lindum waiting for us. But it turns out they only had a small terrified garrison uh, not the epic battle I was hoping for uh, I teased ending this series all episode and I think unless I do see you know a big uptick in support for it I will call it an end to it despite this disappointing finish um, if you guys do want to see me come back even if it's just to finish this thing with a battle uh, deserving of the title grand finale uh, let me know. Um, yeah, I hate that it ends with a cakewalk pushover victory. I kind of hate that. Uh, guys, if I don't see you in the next episode of our Picts campaign in Total War Attila, I will bring you a brand new series starting next week. Love you guys for watching, and I will say, no matter what, if there is no Total War, you will see a video from me next Thursday night. Love you guys, and thank you for watching. I will see all y'all in the next episode.